All right, I am going to show you how to fix a very common problem with sieving convertibles. That problem is where the odometer stops working, sometimes the tachometer stops working, and sometimes the speedometer stops working. This is a 97 Sebring, uh, although I believe the, the same instrument cluster is on the 96 through 2000 or 2001, though I can't swear to that. Uh, but if you have this problem, it's probably because you have this instrument cluster. The problem is there are some solder joints on the back of the uh, panel here that get super hot and eventually the, the joints just crack. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to take this off and repair those joints and it's a lot easier than it might sound. I've done this already once on a, another 97 Sebring that I own and uh, I'd never done anything like it in my life but I got brave one day, followed some instructions I found on the internet and it was uh, actually very easy to do. So first thing you want to do, come on over here we want to disconnect the negative battery terminal. It's marked clearly here. I already uh, loosened the, the nut. Take that off. Unhook that. Make sure it's not touching the uh, body anywhere because that'll make a connection. We don't want to short anything out. Next thing, we got to take off the dash. Again, not as daunting as it might sound. First thing you want to do, pop off this face plate around your radio. It's held on by four clips. It pops off. You know, be gentle so you don't crack the plastic, but it shouldn't be too hard to do. And we're going to remove uh, four screws here. You can see where it's uh, connected to the dash, right there, two down here, and one up there. So we're going to take those off, and then you're going to come over here, remove the fuse panel, and we're going to remove this one screw right here. So I'll do that. All right, I've got those five screws out now. All we're going to do is uh, pull the dash out. First thing you want to do is uh, lower the steering wheel to its lowest position. And then you're just going to pull on the dash, kind of straight out here. You can see where it, it it connects along this, this line here, or, or rather separates there. And so you just gotta kind of pull on it there. Again, you got four clips there holding the thing together. Very easy to do. Trying to get you a little bit of view. Pull that off of there. Set that aside. Wherever. And now, here we are at the instrument panel, and again, got some screws removed, got these two here, and these two here, they need to remove. Now these are just regular Phillips uh, screws, they've also got the hex head on it, so you can use a wrench for that. So we just take off those four screws. Now I do need to mention, uh, some models have uh, on the dash here, I believe it's right about in this area here, uh, a temp uh, directional or something or other computer of some sort. Uh, so when you're pulling the dash off, you pull it away uh, just a few inches and you can reach around and, and uh, unplug that little computer. That's just a little extra thing you got to do if you got one of those. Um, now, I got those four screws removed uh, from here and all around. Those screws on mine, anyway, are identical to the ones that I removed from around the radio and by the fuse box. So I just uh, just dumped them all right here in the cup holder. Easy way to keep track of them. Careful that you don't drop one down in there when you're uh, taking it off. Um, so now we just want to take the panel here, pull it away, and we've got two plugs on the back. Here, that uh, red one over there. And I got to pry them off a little bit. Uh, just be real, just be real careful. And uh, I'm gonna put the camera down so I can use two hands doing that, so I don't mess anything up. So once you get these uh, plugs off, and, and notice there's a little, a little tab right here that you have to kind of. Pull, you know, lock, it helps lock those in place. So you just kind of pull that tab back and wiggle the, the connector out. And uh, same with one on that side. So I'm just going to flip this around this way. I'm going to be careful not to scratch the front of it. Um, so we got this 
cable right here that, that comes in and it's a uh, shoot around my steering wheel here comes in it's connected to this cardboard backing so we want to take this cardboard backing off I also had some uh, funky foam kind of tape or something that was up here but it was mostly off just from heat and age and stuff so we've got uh, on this model I think we got one two three four about five or so of these uh, silver screws that we want to take off to get that cardboard backing off these are Torx type screws the ones that look like a little starburst or however you want to describe it so you're going to need a Torx wrench to do this so I'll go get get my Torx and uh, take those, take that cardboard backing off alright once we get all those screws off backing just comes right off it might, might catch just a little bit on this little fella here so just uh, be aware of that uh, comes right off and now your instrument panel is completely free assuming it's not stuck on with any of this uh, funky tape which like I said it's just it's so old it's, it's not really doing anything anymore so I'm just going to pull that off uh, and again the uh, cup holder great place to keep your screws so that you don't lose them. And try not to drop them down in there when you're taking them off. So now we're going to take our instrument panel. Uh, you can see right here, uh, I don't know how close I can get, but right over in this area, you see how it's kind of blackened around the, or darkened around those resistors. These are the culprits right here that generate all the heat, that crack your solder connections. You can see kind of between these two large ones, you can see a little shiny spot. That's one of the main joints there that you're going to be fixing. Um, don't panic, it's not as hard as it looks, but we are going to move the operation uh, indoors now where my soldering iron is and where we'll take this uh, circuit board off so we can get to the other side and fix those solder connections as well. Alright, now we got nine screws. Uh, some models I understand it might have eleven, but they're these uh, little silver screws right here that you see. Um, I've already taken all of them out except for that one, but they're just placed various places around here. Uh, they, they look like they're holding these things on, but they're not, so don't worry about taking them off of there. That They won't, won't fall off. Uh, so just got the last one there. I always keep uh, old pill bottles around to uh, keep screws in for occasions like this. That way, I don't lose them. My little torch here. The next thing we want to do is pull this circuit board off of here. Now, there's a little plug right here, one that kind of got in the way of taking off that cardboard thing. So we just uh, very carefully wiggle that. It's working against me a little. There we go. So that comes off. And now we want to pull this board out. Now, you got to be careful because there are several places where uh, things kind of come up through the board. Oops, wait a minute. I missed a screw. So, get that last screw off. Extra points for anybody who's sitting there screaming at the monitor saying, hey, you forgot a screw. I'm not going to bother opening my pill bottle. It's too hard to do with a camera in my hand. So, you just kind of lift up on this. Very, very easily comes off. I'd say to be gentle because you notice these. Uh, these little things right here poke up through uh, various spots in the board and just kind of see where they line up. So you've got to be real careful. You don't want to over flex it and, and break it or anything. Um, so again, there's the back side of our uh, problem area. Right there you can see how it's all darkened and we're going to we're going to throw some extra solder on those spots and uh, uh, right in here between these two resistors uh, there's this joint there that needs to be soldered so we're going to try to kind of move these resistors out of the way a little bit just like that and we'll be able to get in there with our soldering iron right in there and solder that up. So I'm not going to be uh, giving you uh, lessons on how to solder. If you don't know how to solder, I want to ask somebody who can help you out. Um, just make some nice uh, solder joints on all these things and uh, then we'll put it back in the car. Now you can, something I want to show you here, you can see these, uh, these two big resistors here. See how loose they are. 
they wiggle back and forth. If you look on this side, I don't know if you can see it or not, in this darkened area here where our bad joints are, if I, if I wiggle it, you can see the connection moving a little bit where the pin comes through, but you probably can't see it on the camera. But anyway, that's a result of those those uh, dried out, cracked up uh, joints. So because these are, are so loose, I'm just going to kind of push them to the side a little here so that I can get to that uh, solder connection right in between there. That'll make it easier to get to. Uh, if, if you want to, you can uh, find the where this resistor comes through on this side and uh, desolder that and just pull one side of that resistor out and kind of bend it out of the way so that you can get to that spot. But I, I think I can get to it alright, just moving these out of the way. So I'm going to do this one first so then I can put these, when I solder the other side of these, I'll be able to put them you know, in a place where they belong and not uh, have to worry about moving them afterwards. Okay, and the soldering is complete. See some, uh, I don't know if you can see too well, some nice shiny, uh, looking at that little grouping right there. I know it's not focusing, but just trying to show you what we're looking at. So we've got some nice domed, uh, new solder connections on there nice and pretty looking and on this side got that spot between the two resistors nice and domed up nice and shiny all ready to go and now all we gotta do put the board back in and we're just gonna reverse the process so again you got these uh, spots here that come up through the board so as you're putting it on, just be real gentle, make sure they slide through. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put that back on, I'm going to put the screws back in, and then we'll take it back out to the car. So here we are, all put back together, all nine screws put in, possibly eleven in your case. Don't forget to plug this back in right here. Don't plug it in, probably aren't going to see much on your uh, panel there so make sure you plug that in when you're putting it on make sure that you, you you know push down make sure it seats real well around everything around these uh, uh, pegs that stick out here and, and so on so get that all back together got it oriented right side up so now to put it back in the dash we're going to set it up here and now we're going to take our cardboard backing we're just going to line it up over the screw holes and we're going to put the screws back in and we're going to plug in our red and blue cables right there don't forget these are the the five silver Torx screws that go in here don't make sure you don't grab the wrong screws all right. Once we got everything put back on the uh, screwed on the back, plugged in the two the red and blue cables, slip this right back in place. Put in these four screws on the white tabs. Again, those are the same as the ones that were around the radio, so you don't have to worry about which ones exactly you get. So all in place, ready to put the dash back in. Just slide it past all your hanging paraphernalia off your mirror and now again I'm probably going to put the camera down but you can see the, the tabs uh, you can see where they where they go slide right in there so I'm just going to slide the whole dash cover right back in place once you get the dash in place put the one screw back here under the fuse panel put the four screws back in here Snap your uh, faceplate back in. Uh, I recommend trying to line up the two tabs at the top first. It seems to go in a lot easier that way. And, and be aware with all of these screws, you don't need to super tighten them. Um, nothing's going anywhere here. Um, just to make sure they're seated well. So everything's back in place. Last thing you do is come back over here. Don't forget to reconnect your negative battery terminal. Nothing's going to work if you don't. 
And now for the moment of truth. I have not seen mileage on my car for, I don't know, quite a while here. There it is. Worked like a champ. That's all there is to it.